Not too long ago, I was sitting around roaming the internet for content ideas, and suddenly I saw a word that deeply penetrated the core recesses of my youthful mind. That word was Spriggan. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. So apparently Netflix is releasing a new anime series titled Spriggan and dropped a trailer for it just a few days ago. The general reception to the trailer seems to be positive, and a lot of people are hyped up to see what it could be and are curious about what this anime is all about. But of course, my bitter old man ass watched the trailer and immediately was disappointed in it. Not because of trying to make a new spring in anime, and not because I think the story or voice acting looks weak or anything, but because I remembered first watching the original Spriggan movie from the late 90s. A movie that my 13-year-old self thought was the coolest fucking thing ever. And the main component in that that makes this such a spectacle to watch was its brilliant animation style. It's no secret that I'm not generally a fan of CGI animation in anime. Most of the time, I think it gets rid of the artistic flair and it becomes more flat and uniform in all of its motions. Obviously, there's exceptions to this, but far more often than not, CGI anime just looks kind of dull and plain. But then you have Spriggan from 1998, fresh, kinetic, highly detailed animation that honestly is maybe too damn good for the movie itself. But this thing, it just looks incredible. The action sequences in this film are a spectacle to behold and add such a high level of intensity to what you're watching on the screen. So just in the back of my mind, Spriggan has always been synonymous with brilliant and intense animation. But let's get into talking about the actual movie and if it's any good, and I figure now is the best time to go back and revisit it and mention it in a video for you guys, so before the Netflix Spriggan anime drops, you can be aware of this original film and do yourself a favor by checking it out, the one that came out in 1998, before going into the Netflix version. As most anime does, Spriggan was adapted from a manga series created by Hiroshi Takashige and drawn by Ryoji Minagawa. The film adapts what I assume is one arc of the manga, but I guess it's only a few chapters long. But strange how long this property has existed, but for nearly 20 years, this movie is all we ever got. Katsuhiro Odomo, who also worked on the legendary film Akira, helped to supervise the directing and production of this movie, and it definitely shows. Not just in how crisp and fluid the animation is, but in this movie we get yet another little boy character with intense psychic abilities that's very much reminiscent of those classic Akira vibes. But I guess I should explain, what the hell is a Spriggan? So, in this story, which takes place in our real world, there is an organization called Arkham, which basically makes sure that ancient relics and artifacts from early human history don't get discovered by the public or fall into the wrong hands due to the knowledge and technology of these things being incredibly powerful by nature. The Spriggan are an elite team of highly trained soldiers that help defend Arkham's artifacts from being possessed by world leaders that would use it for personal gain. And yes, of course, America is one of them in the movie, and though it's only mentioned in one scene and not really focused on too much, I still think it's a pretty accurate representation of what would happen, so it doesn't offend me as an American. The powerful want more power, that's just the way it is, it makes sense to me. In the beginning of the movie, there is this momentous discovery that falls upon a team of researchers. They find buried in the mountains near Turkey, Noah's Ark. Yeah, and it's not just a big boat. This thing is a gigantic kaiju-sized piece of foreign technology that is literally existing outside of space-time and has been frozen for thousands of years. The Ark also has so many strange and interesting facets to it that it's hard to talk about it without getting into spoilers, but one thing I love is how even though we begin to learn how the Ark works and what it can actually do, we never get a clear explanation on where it came from only that it would be virtually impossible to be built by humans. So whether it came from an actual god, it came from space, or from another dimension, we don't really know. But what we do know is that the Ark is here, it has awakened, and it has the power to destroy all of mankind should it fall into the hands of power or madness. Our main character is a teenager named Omanai Yu, who right from the get-go we recognize as an absolute badass. 
He is a Spriggan, so obviously he's highly skilled, and he's also perhaps moderately enhanced as far as the level of a human being can go. He's weapons trained, and his signature being a large knife that he carries on his belt, but he's also well versed in a variety of firearms that he uses throughout the movie. But then there's also the suit, and this suit is kick-ass. It kind of reminds me of the suit from Gantt, not in how it looks exactly, but how it performs. It enhances the wearer's strength, speed, agility, so basically allowing you to jump down with a punch and have that punch completely rip through the trailer of a truck in half. It's awesome, and the build-up and execution of the scene where he uses it, it, it's just absolutely fantastic. Yu works very well as a main character, and he does have an interesting past, but the only issue is that in just a 90-minute movie that already has this big plotline happening with the arc, we don't really get to fully understand the full extent of where he came from and why he ended up here with the Spriggans until nearly the end of the movie. But I will say that during that backstory reveal, I think the tone, the music, and everything was absolutely on point, and it works amazingly well in the scene. I wish we got a little bit more of it. The antagonists in this movie come in all shapes and sizes, and I love that for them. First, we have this huge motherfucker whose name is literally Fat Man. Of course, no one's going to mess with him because his body is mostly machine and his right arm is literally a Gatling gun. How he has the strength to carry it with no counterweight on the other side is beyond me, but it doesn't matter because it's cool. He's also tied into Yu's backstory, but again, we don't really get a lot of information on that towards the end of the movie. And there's also this other villain who is extremely agile and his signature weapons are these string-like razor wires that wrap around his enemies and rip their limbs off. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Also, his reveal in the movie with the music pumping it up is so terrifying and exciting. I I'm just going to play it for you guys. And lastly, we have this Kmart version of an Akira child here named McDougal, who I guess is technically supposed to be a child but he's super intelligent and was experimented on, which resulted in giving him these intense psychic abilities. He can just send psychic waves of energy out to attack people if he wants to, he blows people through doorways, and he can create a shield and barrier around his own body. He works well as a villain because his power is way beyond anyone else in the movie, and he really doesn't take bullshit at all. But he's not just a puppet working for the world leaders to gain control of the Ark, because he does have his own agendas as well and in doing so becomes much more of an independent obstacle to overcome, but also makes some solid points about humanity and the reasons why he wants the Ark to control its abilities. Anytime you have a character that views themselves as a god, you're going to get that message that no one person should have divine authority. And the fact that we're human should be a testament to that. We never seem to be aware or content with our limitations, and I guess this is what leads us to be so power-hungry as a species. And there is somewhere to go with that. Something about placing this Ark within the hands of humans, or mixing the ideas of the biblical era with highly advanced technology. Perhaps it's all one and the same. Perhaps all the stories in the Bible and other religions can be explained through science and technology that the humans of that time, and even in our present time, are still too primitive to understand, and thus it became godlike when we wrote it down to talk about it. These are really cool and interesting questions that the movie dangles over your head, but it doesn't double down into them, so it can leave you feeling a little bit frustrated and unfulfilled when it's all said and done. I guess you could say the movie leaves you wanting more, which is generally a good thing, but since there was no other Spriggan anime ever, you're kind of just left with this vague idea of a story alongside, well, I mean some of the best animation of the 1990s. And I'm not kidding, this is what I remembered most about this movie, and this is what the majority of people who like it will tell you. It's a display of pure art and a beauty to behold when it comes to its animation. Even the simplest scenes, like where Yu is disassembling a gun and cleaning it, it looks freaking amazing. The action scene that happens about a half hour in, where you see Yu use the suit for the first time, has got to be the highlight of the movie's action set pieces. This fight goes so goddamn hard, and is almost too good 
Because after this scene, even though there's still a lot of action, nothing else quite measures up to this scene in terms of battle sequences. It's just so entertaining that later in the movie before the final confrontation between you and McDougal, I kind of wish there was a few more enemies for you to fight before getting to him just because it's so great to watch the animation and fight scenes within this thing. But all in all, this movie is an incredibly fun ride from start to finish. You will never be bored, and that's even without a very large cast or that much character development. And a lot of things are left very vague and kind of out in the ether. But even so, it doesn't matter. The animation, the action, and the ideas that the movie presents is good enough to keep you engaged at least for a good hour and a half. The most disappointing thing to me is how this movie has kind of fallen to the wayside. I never hear anybody talk about this. Hell, even I hadn't thought about it for quite a while until the trailer for the new Netflix version came out. It's not held in the same high regard as something like Akira or Ghost in the Shell, and I don't think it should be considered on that quite high of a level, but there are some incredible and memorable things that are done here, and I think that it should be appreciated for that. Seriously, I haven't watched this movie in like 12 years, and I still remembered scenes exactly how they were supposed to be. It left that much of an imprint on me. I think it's the kind of movie that's going to leave an impression on you, even if it's not one that has a ton of things to dissect. But I think the doors that it opens are something I would love to see more of, and it does have some deeper criticisms here on humanity, governing powers, and biblical history. All really cool concepts that are wrapped up in jaw-dropping action scenes that are well worth getting hyped for. So if you have never seen Spriggan, please, I highly recommend you to do so. The only unfortunate thing here is that since this movie has become a bit obscure, I don't think that it's streaming on any official platform. So you'll probably have to use one of those shady websites, which I'm totally not promoting you to do. Wink, wink, go watch this movie. But the worst part is I know for a fact that I used to have a DVD of this movie, but I also know that I gave it to a friend like years and years ago. That was stupid. Don't be like me. If you still have a copy of this thing, keep it close to your heart and defend it like you are a Spriggan keeping ancient historical tech away from the corrupted government officials of the world. Can you do that for me? Anyways, thanks for watching this, guys. If you have seen Spriggan, please post down below in the comments what your thoughts are about it. I'd be super curious to hear what you think of it if you have seen it. And other than that, please like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more anime and manga content, check the links down below as well. I'd really appreciate it if you signed up to my Patreon, even $1 a month would be super helpful, and it'll help these videos continue to roll out consistently, so I'd appreciate that. If not, that's alright too. And as well, down below in the description, you will see my various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.